You girls is different from the rest. I knew y'all was special from the moment I saw you. For a while, like I'd been playing with this this type of structure, and this thing is like more like a liquid narrative, where, where time is more free and jumping forwards and backwards. And the movie was more meant to mimic a, like a drug experience. It was more like a, a like a ride or a physical experience than anything. Almost more like micro scenes, things that were very quick but then extended and looped in some ways. Maybe the movie is more musical than it is, or experiential than it is like traditionally narrative. So. It's like a stew or a chemical, you know, reaction. You put all these things and look, you start to put locations and outfits and characters in, in one place and then you shake it up and you document the explosion and things go here and things go there and you just You know, you set up a movie so that, like Charlie Seven films, so anything can happen, like I do at least. You know, I don't go in like saying this is the right movie, this is the wrong movie, this is the thing. This is it. I go in as like there's a big margin and it's undefined, and uh, and that's what's exciting to me. And so I wrote it during spring break, a couple of, like two years ago, uh, just switching hotels in Panama City, Florida, just switching hotels, and kids were just smashing my doors in and vomiting on my my porch and blasting Taylor Swift all night and shit, and it was really difficult to take. <laughs> Hey, Mom. I'm good? Yeah, it was amazing. I love the idea of working with those girls specifically because they also, in real life, are representative of that culture and of that, that dream. And so you know, I wanted the girls to be gangsters, you know, like different sides to a single being. And so, like, Selena's character is more the morality. Rich's character is more like a bridge between the two. And then you have the two top girls that are just complete sociopaths, really pure pop sociopath. They're just four parts of a whole. And so I just started to break down their characters in that way. Boy, please, right all around and action. Look at this shit. Look at my shit. I got fucking machine guns. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this motherfucker here. Look at this motherfucker. Huh? There's this intersection between like it's like gangster mysticism, and somewhere in that world, that there's a collision, and it becomes those girls and Franco's character. Yeah, you know, I was rewriting the script, and as we were going, every day I was changing it because the characters were changing in front of me. I start to imagine like the way it looks and feels, and the pace and the rhythms, and so that dictates the way it's written and the structure. So. Like, I think, yeah, I think with this movie, it was mostly, it became, and it, with a lot of the films I do, Gummo was the same thing, I remember it was just, be, it starts out as just a series of images, like fo like me describing, almost like photographs, just really simple. It was like a trip, you know? So once you kind of establish that that's the, the mode and the method of the film, the way you're watching it, is uh, you can kind of go with it. make sure when this movie is like no one's ever really comfortable for too long. I didn't want you to ever just be able to like just sit there and get like lost in it. Like I wanted there to be like that physical component. Like you were having to ride with it or something. I thought that the movie should be based on something that was more like a pop song or something. More that had hooks and 
where there was like a catchiness to it. It was very quick and then it would just kind of disappear into the night somewhere. It was something that gets lodged in your mind and then bam, it just disappears.